next month onwards. So we are targeting for launch by next year. We wanted to, so this we wanted to, we have proposed this con configuration for uh, even disaster management, we wanted to part, part, part P to the International Disaster Management Consultation. A CANES organization, the CANES organization from Canada, they are very much interested in collaborating with us to take it up to an international level. So this, of course, gives an orbital uh, simulation uh, how the image, how the orbit will will go from north to south and how the orbital visibility of the region. All the things are just given in this picture. And this gives the overall uh, internal configuration of the uh, satellite. You can see the the bottom deck is the main deck which is interfacing with the launch vehicle. The bottom side is the launch interface with the launch vehicle. The onboard computers are all located here. The reaction wheels are kept here. The magnetic tarker is coming over here, and all the side panels, the power, power subsystem, two power subsystem, power modules are kept here, and the panels will be coming on that side, these two sides, and we have the, uh, this is the activating side. You can see the activating side. We are transmitter, S band, batch antenna, as well as UHF, UHF antennas are kept folded in this tent, and it is deployed after going to the orbit. And the solar panels also is folded. I will show you the last picture. The solar panel also folded here. Immediately after launch, it gets auto, through auto sequence, it gets deployed. And the pulse plasma thrust is kept here because the future, we, we don't want to leave the uh, satellite as a debris on the orbit. Maybe after the operational life is over, we can uh, deboost it and bring it to atmosphere and so that we can burn out. A pulse plasma thrust is kept here. And the provision is kept for two star sensor because star sensor is required for precise attitude determination. So two star sensor provision is there, but right now we are using an own star sensor for this first mission. This of course is a parallel you could more details on that later. So this is overall assembled configuration. So this when the panels are assembled it will be looking like this. See the solar panels are solar panels are folded during launch and after going to launch after going after the launch separates for the launch vehicle it gets deployed, the four solar panels will be directly facing towards the sun to generate almost 40 watts of power. We have around 10 ampere hour uh, lithium ion battery there during uh, powering power to support the power during eclipse periods. Well, this is a solar panel around 10 solar cells, 10, 10 watts each panel can generate. And bottom is the launch vehicle interface, which is the IPL 230, it was qualified by PSLV for surface systems. And of course, this goes on to the internal view of the satellite. And this is the separation system arrangement. This is the interfaces with the interfaces with the launch vehicle. We have the pushers plates coming over here, and this is the six screws uh, will be directly connected. One part will be connected to the satellite, other part will be connected to the launch vehicle. And two bottom two sun sensors are kept as a redundant sun sensor for sun pointing of the whole solar panel for maximum power generation. But this, of course, gives the, the details of the payload which we are uh, developing with jointly with the Space Application Center. You can have, you can see in the spectral, there are four spectral bands. Uh, V1, V2, V3 is from 0.45 micron to around 0.86 micron. So we are going only up to 680. And of course, we have planned to have another camera with the swivel with 1.1 to 1.5 micron. So that the fast fire detection is possible with that camera. We have we have space available to accommodate one more camera, so that we can switch on either this camera or the other camera. So these are some of the details of this camera. This, of course, gives some of the details with respect to the, the, the subsystems, the power, electrical power system, the two solar panels forming a little bus. We have the charger, battery charger, and the recharge regulators. And this is our whole battery, which provides power for the restoration. The total power is, of course, it is giving a solar panel can generate almost 40 watts of power with 100% illumination. And uh, the battery will give almost uh, two batteries. And like since we told, it's a two bus configuration. Uh, each battery will be around 5 ampere capacity. It can total eclipse duration, total touch of recharge will come to around 10%, less than 10%. To meet the cycle requirement of life, almost we are trying to go for two year life of the satellite. So the depth of recharge has to be less than. Uh, by, uh, less than 10 percent. We are trying to achieve that uh, using this configuration. And we have a power management, we have around 24 switches to switch on, switch off any of the subsystems on the on board. So this gives the attitude orbit control system mainly in the OBC uh, control element for the attitude orbit control. Here we have the sun sensor, we have totally, whole system, attitude control systems are totally redundant. We have the four sun sensors, 
two magnetometers, two gyroscopes, and uh, one star sensor, of course, is kept without star sensor, also the mission can uh, give the attitude of the accuracy of 0.0 degree. And the pulse plasma thruster, we are keeping it as optional. We are jointly developing with the uh, liquid propulsion system center. The magnetic target and the uh, micro reaction wheel, four micro reaction wheels, it can take care of any two wheel failures. So that is the, 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 the configuration we are adopting here. The whole control, control algorithm is updated uh, in the computer using the CLAN but this is a micro reaction which is jointly developed by uh, our university and the Sonata University. Uh, this is getting qualified. And uh, internationally, many satellites demand uh, curing this type of micro reaction wheel. And there's already uh, an inquiry for asking this wheel to supply. So, if it's possible, we can even export this wheel. But this is an RF communication system. The whole community. And one thing what I want to tell is we are developing this card. Suitable for nano satellite also. There's a CubeSat standard card we are developing. And this card can be accommodated even at CubeSat bus. CubeSat standard bus also can be accommodated. So whereas here we are accommodating all these cards in the side panels as an independent card. So that whole satellite, if we want to have a totally single system, this also is possible. Or if it's a redundant system, that also is possible. But this is just an idea. And with respect to onboard computer, the, some of the specifications are the it's a high performance, we are using E230 dual core, the 2 bit power architecture processor. And it has many features, there are almost all type of interfaces like uh, I2C or the CAN interface or SPA interface or the GBIP interface. So, all sorts of features are available with this, this uh, OPC. So, we have selected this and we have to be So, the ground station also it has a uh, uh, UHF, VHF uh, receiving and transmission. And we have a 3 meter uh, S band reflector. So, all the three things are received and then the ground processing is done. You can just use a view and maybe another month's time this will be established in the city. So, it will be interested in the city. And the, actually, we are ready to receive the any amateur satellites. We have configured a, a AX225 protocol for telemetry reception. And of course, any other standard also we can uh, tune it. So, X25 directly, amateur satellite, HAMSATS, you can directly receive and we can uh, transmit. Also, is possible to this demonstration. And the development is as a common development for satellite checkout system, mission operation as well for demonstrations. Of course, the, we have put a proposal for a disaster management, part of disaster management constellation. With four such satellites, it is possible two can be launched in the daytime and two can be put in the afternoon. It is possible within few hours. Of any event, it should be possible to monitor the disasters and provide information to that. So, this concept we have proposed. Four satellite as well as eight satellite configurations we have proposed. Depends upon the, it is going to be discussed during uh, this March 31st and uh, April 1st. There is going to be an SST uh, workshop being held in the ESC in terms of science. And during that time, we may be finalizing the configuration and uh, some funds are expected from you. So, we may go for further surveys of this also. And another concept, what we have seen, one, uh, the environmental monitoring was uh, the big issue with respect to our own satellites. We are not, we are not planned for such a satellite because of the complexity of the onboard sensor. So we have given an idea with uh, using a wireless sensor network spread across the country for monitoring the pollution gases, the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and methane, and then collecting and then uplinking to the satellite. We are, they are already having permission on board the. And you said, yeah, store and forward payload. So you can uh, collect from the nodes, node centers, the gateways of this, and then it can just store load, store the data on board, and it can transmit back to one of the ground station. Any ground station we can locate that the daily or anywhere, any ground station can transmit. So the whole environment data can be collected, and uh, so it is possible to experimentally demonstrate as a pilot project. We have one for monitoring the environment around the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu. And then later we want to expand this program project to all over India monitoring. And this proposal also we have worked for international uh, forums. And if it is accepted, we can ex extend this technology throughout the world also, it's possible. And this satellite, one more, one more thing we have uh, suggested was, this bus is capable of providing, uh, uh, accommodating a short payload, synthetic aperture uh, payload, with around 15 watts peak power. It is possible to provide accommodate a SAR, S band SAR of around 1.1 meter and around 0.2 meter uh, dimensions. With around 15 watt power, we can achieve around 10 meter resolution synthetic aperture attack. So, that the payload development we have initiated 
And also we are trying to jointly develop with the ISR research and the, the ISR research center as well as from SAC. And if it is successful, it will be a mono satellite with the uh, SAR will be the first uh, mission we, are, we may demonstrate these uh, functions. So, and it has a potential because we have one of the limitations with respect to optical sensors are the